SQLite is a particularly useful database to use for web app development. It sits in a single folder, and this can be in the same folder as your PHP code or Python code. It's also very portable. SQLite databases can be used for a wide range of application development. Backing up the database is very simple. Download a copy of the file and save it. You can also open and edit an SQLite database using software on the desktop. So download it to your desktop and then open it with a program such as DB Browser. Uh, this runs on Windows, Mac and Linux and can be downloaded from the URL given here. SQLite is very widely used in app development and it also runs on many mobile devices. The syntax for SQLite queries is not exactly the same as for MySQL or MariaDB, and the way we prepare parameters to save data securely is also slightly different. The script create SQLite database.php runs through the process of creating an SQLite database, inserting data, reading data out of the table, and we follow that with some suggested exercises. Creating a new SQLite database is simply a matter of opening it. If it isn't already there, this will then create it. So if we look after this point on the server, we would see demo SQLite in the file. So that database now exists. The next step is to create a table in this database. And we're going to use the SQL statement, create a table if not exists. And we're calling this table people. This table is going to have columns, a username, which will be text and will, will be the primary key, not null and unique. A primary key by implication is also unique. Column hash pass will be text and not null. Not null means it must be present. And real name, which will also be text. This is created by the exec SQL statement. If it cannot create it, it will die with create table failed. At this point, the database table has now been created. The next part of the script will insert two rows of data into the table. The SQL statement insert or replace into means that if we run it again, it won't throw an error because it already exists. So if our unique key item is present already in the database, then the same row will be used. It won't create another row with the same unique primary key. The values are text strings that correspond to the same order that we created the columns. So we haven't specified the columns here. We've just provided an item for each column in the same order. Again, the statement will be executed and will die if it cannot achieve this. This is followed by a second row of data being inserted into our table with the values, again, text strings, which will be inserted at this point. This data has now been added to the table. Reading data out of the table, if I just scroll down, we're using the SQL statement to select the username, the hash pass, and the real name from people. The result is a database query using this SQL, again, dying if it fails to work. We're going to use an associative array. Row is equal to the result, fetch array. And because it's associative, we can use the names of the column to identify the items that we want when we print it out. Now, we're not using any inputs from the web here, so we're not using prepared parameters for our query, but we are going to follow the practice of using HTML special characters for all printout from the database, and we will start that here. So we're going to print out our username, real name, and the hash pass 
for each of the rows in our database. So this is going to iterate through each of the rows, producing a row for each row in the database, which we will then print to the screen. My demo SQLite file has appeared in the folder alongside the script that created it. I'm now going to right-click on Demo SQLite, save link as, and save it onto my own computer. I can again open this by right-clicking. I can open it with my database browser. So here is my new SQLite database opened in DB Browser. As you can see, it gives the structure of the table. And if I click on Browse Data, it displays the content of each row and each column. So I can easily confirm that the data in the table is as I expect from the code that created it. Before we try making changes, we will save a copy of our PHP script under another name. And this is the one that we will now modify to explore how we make changes to an SQLite database. First of all, let us change the name. To my test. We'll save that. Upload it to the server. Run it. And that appears to have run correctly. We will refresh our view of the files on the server. There's our test file. We called it my test and it's there. We can check on the server by using our server utility. Refresh that. Here's our new SQLite database. and it confirms that we have created our database and stored the details. Rather than creating a whole series of databases, I'm going to go back to the files, delete my test, now next I'm going to change the name of the table I can change the name of column headings, so identify a column heading. I'm going to add another column heading. Uh, if I add it at the end, I need a comma, the name of the table, and the type. Again, I will simply use text. There's no comma following the last item in the list. Um, if I execute that, that will create that table. Now, if I now run that, it's inserting into people rather than our new table. So I know that I should expect an error if I run that at this stage. But just to confirm that, I will save that. I will upload that again to server. I will run it again. And as expected, I've got the error, no such table. 
So I need to ensure that when I insert data or otherwise handle a table in the database, I'm using the same name as the one I've created. So I've created one called This Is New. I need to match that in my insert or replace. And the next one as well, or it'll give me another error. So I'll save that again, upload the file again, run the file again. Ah, it expects four columns, four values, not three values. So we've discovered something. We have to provide a value if we're using this construct. Let us add another value to match our extra column. So we're adding a comma, the value, and we must do the same for our second insert, comma, and the new value. Save it again. Upload it. Run it. And we've got an error on line 31. That is the point of execution. The error is actually in what we've just added. So if we look at the line before, what we've omitted is the closing comma there, inverted comma. Try again. Disable Apple. Upload our revised script. Run our revised script. Right. So data has been added to the table, reading data out of the table. And we've again got a warning, no such table, because we haven't edited later on. So that's as we would expect. And if we go back to our utility on the server, we've got the contents that we expect in our new database table. So let's carry on with our editing. We've now got to reading out the content. And it's from people when it should be from our new table. This is new. And let's read our new column as well. So our new column is called extra. So again, I did a comma, but there's no comma at the end. And we want to print this out. So we're echoing the value of our extra column. We want to include the HTML special characters. Um, so here is the bit we want to duplicate. So I'm going to copy that, paste it after the dot to concatenate that. So add that bit on. So dot print a colon dot print our variable and this should be extra. Save it. 
upload it, run it. No such column hash pass. What have we done wrong this time? If we look at our columns and remember what we did, we actually changed the name of that to telephone. So we're asking it to print a column that no longer exists. Here's the column telephone. So we need to make sure that our columns match. So this one needs to be edited to be telephone or it doesn't match the columns in our table. Telephone. Save it. Upload it. Run it. This time it's printed out the contents and if we refresh this browser again, still got the correct contents down there. What we've done is we've changed the name of our database. We've changed the SQL to create our columns, changing the name of the column, adding a new column. We've altered our insert query to match our new columns. We've altered our read query to match our new columns. We've altered our new print echo statement to match our new columns. And when everything matches, we've tested it and ensured that it works. Now note the process of doing a little bit at a time. Do a little bit, make a change, upload and test. Make another change, save it, upload and test. Doing a little bit at a time is a very good way of developing code without introducing errors. And if you do get errors, then read the error message, compare that with what's displayed in the code and note that the error being reported by a line such as line 33 here to execute the SQL, the error itself is probably in the SQL, not in the execute statement.